What is the truth in the stories we are told? We've been given a story of a world fueled by separation. We've become separate from one another, separate from the earth, ultimately separate from the true nature of ourselves. It's time we learn the truth. It's time you rewrite your story. It's time to realign with who it is that you really are. This is the fifth dimension. You are infinite and eternal. We are infinite and eternal. Our natural essence, we could say, is, is simply being. We have this awakening coming together as a perfect storm. We're ready for this. We have the capacity inside. We just got to find that. All right. I want to welcome everybody into the Fit Dimension podcast with me, Evan McDermott. For this episode, you will own nothing and you will be happy about it. How about that? That's what the World Economic Forum says. We're going to be diving deep into this concept of you'll own nothing, you'll be happy. The idea of private property, I have a lot of thoughts on this and I'm seeing a lot of different ways in which we are actually seeing the results of this like appear in society. We're seeing the buying up of houses, which we're going to dive into. It's great transfer of wealth, uh, the middle class to the elites, essentially. So I really want to dive into this concept and why I think we're a lot closer to this end result than people realize. I don't think not everybody is directly impacted and is seeing what is going on behind the scenes. So I want to dive into that you my own take because despite all the chaos of the world, I do still feel optimistic, hopeful that we are going to awaken collectively and sort of right the ship here. So before we jump into the episode, just want to give a quick shout out. Happy birthday to my dad, June 14th, 2021, date of this episode release. He would have been, what year is it, 2021? Would have been 71 years old today. I am wearing his vest that he wore, uh, Vietnam veteran. In his honor, for those watching on YouTube, you can see that. Those listening, just take my word for it. It's pretty. I look good in it. You know, I've been wearing it around a little bit. You know, I've, I've been feeling his energy, his spirit. So I just wanted to give that quick shout out. The man who did radio himself was, you know, I've been told I have an all right podcasting voice, but his, whew, he should have been doing the late night, like whatever it is, the top shows in America with that voice. Anyways. So shout out to him. Happy birthday. I would have liked to think if you were alive today, you'd be seeing what's going on. Very intuitive, man. So, and if you're a fan of the show, be sure to subscribe, whatever platform you're on. If you're on YouTube, click the like button. Uh, you know, send this to a friend who's interested in learning about this. You know, there's, it's, you really have to go searching more than just one Google search if you want to find truth and, and make objective reasoning sort of your goal. So as always, keep an open heart, open mind. For those first being introduced to the topic, I would actually like to start by showing you an image that the World Economic Forum put out as part of a video. And for those just listening, the album artwork is going to be this image. So let's take a look. I'm going to share the screen so you can see it. Voila, it says... You own nothing and you will be happy. Look at this guy. I mean, just look at him. Who could have ever thought that when he posed for this photo shoot with the World Economic Forum, that he would be used as propaganda, propaganda to promote a new world order and complete transfer of power into the hands of the elite. Like, can you imagine if he's awake to this and he sees his image plastered all over the place? I'm going to need to do some like research and see who this guy is, find him and put him on the podcast or something. See if that's possible. I mean, if I can get a hand, a, a hold of the facial recognition technology that these governments have, you know, I could track him down in about probably 30 seconds, but you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. So, and I'm showing this because people who want to call this a conspiracy theory 
it's not a it, it's obviously not a conspiracy theory because it is being talked openly by the World Economic Forum, by governments all around the world. How often are you hearing them talk about this great reset? They're meeting in Davos. All the elites are coming together. They're pushing an agenda. That's what it is. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's an agenda. Right in the open. You'll own nothing and you will be happy. Is that so? Now, in taking a spiritualistic approach, I really get how somebody could appeal to the idea of not lack of ownership. I mean, I myself really do not try not to define my existence by material property. Like I am so much more than a materialistic physical being that all of this is just play, right? Like I don't need anything. I don't need to own anything. Yet this concept of a government or in this case, organization coming in and telling me, hey, you're going to own nothing and you're going to be damn happy about it. It's very Orwellian. It's very Orwellian. You know, I mentioned in the last podcast about how we saw the people in 1984 living in the way that they were. They don't own anything. They live in these little cubicles. Uh, how do we get there? Well, it's through agendas like this. Right. We don't see in Orwell's text exactly what the government did. Here was the policy that led to this. So you need to look out for this, this and that. We really need to use our critical thinking skills here, ladies and gentlemen, and understand that agendas like that lead to Orwellian dictator type of societies. Right. And just to hammer home the point to talk that this is not a conspiracy theory, they put out this. This is 2016. This is five years ago. I want to show you an article they put out on Forbes. Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. So they are actively promoting this idea that we are not going to own anything. We're not going to have any privacy, right? And I'm going to read this full article because I think it really is telling the type of things that they are advocating for, right? So let's read through it. Those just listening, obviously you can hear me read it. You don't need to necessarily see the article. Welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say our city? How dystopian. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense for us in this city. Everything you considered a product has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food, and all things we need in our daily lives. One by one, all these things became free. So it ended up not making sense for us to own much. First and foremost, nothing in this life is free, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but this, this just sounds like one of those things where it, it, it's basically they are spoon feeding propaganda about how great this sort of communistic totalitarian society is going to be. Like how glamorous does this sound? Welcome to our exclusive club. You ain't got to own shit, baby girl. You just got to come on in. Life is good. If you are like... This, this level of comfort, it's what it's providing, comfort, comfort, comfort. If we look at what has been the downfall over the last 30, 40 years of our society, it's because people have been become addicted to comfort, to gratification. That's what all of this technology has been doing. You know, you can go and post a photo on Instagram and get 100 likes, and that's like 100, like the, the equivalent maybe not the direct equivalent because it doesn't happen as much anymore, but the equivalent of a hundred people coming up to you saying, I like you. I like what you just did there. Like we are getting spoon feeding this gratification. And it's like, and now that we are more hopeless in a lot, many cases, people are broken. They have completely destroyed our way of life. We are seeing people lose their jobs, not able to leave their homes and lockdowns right now, although those are mostly over. But you get the point I'm getting at. They have wrecked so many people's lives, and here's the solution. 
perfect example of problem, create a problem, a reaction, hysteria. Here's our solution. When in reality, this is an agenda. It's not a solution. We created problems where we could frame this solution as your exact need. Let's continue. First, communication became digitalized and free to everyone. Well, that sounds familiar. Then, when clean energy became free, things started to move quickly. We are seeing that push happen. Transportation dropped dramatically in price. It made no sense for us to own cars anymore because we could call a driverless vehicle or a flying car for longer journeys within minutes. We started transporting ourselves in a much more organized and coordinated way when public transport became easier, quicker, and more convenient than the car. Now, I can hardly believe that we accept congestion and traffic jams, not to mention the air pollution from combustion engines. What were we thinking? It's basically calling our methods, our practices archaic, like saying, look at you, you stupid human. You stupid human driving your car. You stupid human owning a home. What is wrong with you? Come on over, have some fun, live how we're supposed to live. It's basically telling them that the way of life that they are living right now is shameful. And if they want to be accepted, they have to embrace this new way. And look how convenient it is. Why won't you just accept it? Let's keep going. Sometimes I use my bike when I go to see some of my friends. I enjoy the exercise and the ride. Exercise is good. I will say that. It kind of gets the soul to come along on the journey. <laughs> These motherfuckers. Funny how these things never seem to lose their excitement. Walking, biking, cooking, drawing, and growing plants. It makes perfect sense. It reminds us of how our culture emerged out of a close relationship with nature. Now, look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. It's exactly the same type of scenario that I explained last episode in the Project Bluebeam one. You know, they talk all of this truth like our society is very disconnected from nature we don't we are not present when we are doing activities like walking biking cooking growing plants sustaining life like it is giving you a truth that you know in your heart that we are unfulfilled in our way of being in our own our our way of being collectively is quite broken spiritually. And they are offering this perfect dystopian solution, quote unquote solution. We don't, we don't need legislative problems to fix or legislative solutions to fix spiritual problems. All right. I'm going to dive more into that on the end of the episode, because I think that's a, grand solution on the grand scheme of things but what i want to say for right now is you need to put your spiritual house in order your own cards in order to solve these problems the government can't fix these things for you if you are feeling that way what they're describing the government is not going to fix that for you what is the world economic forum going to benefit or how are these governments going to benefit when you own nothing who owns everything it's a question to ask, to keep in mind. Let's keep going. In our city, we don't pay any rent because someone else is using our free space whenever we do not need it. My living room is used for business meetings when I am not there. Again, you could make the argument, like, how dumb is humanity to keep people out on the streets and have outrageous home prices and people can't afford to live? Like, I get it. That's an issue. Is this solving it? by taking away the self-responsibility. Once in a while, I will choose to cook for myself. It is easy. The necessary kitchen equipment is delivered at my door within minutes. Since transport became free, we stopped having all those things stuffed into our house. Why keep a pasta maker and a crepe cooker crammed into our cupboards? We can just order them when we need them. Again, detachment from material objects. Playing into some universal truths and using those universal truths to deceive. That is propaganda 101. This also made the breakthrough of the circular economy easier. When products are turned into services, no one has an interest in things with a short lifespan. Everything is designed for durability. 
repairability, and recyclability. The materials are flowing more quickly in our economy and can be transformed to new products pretty easily. Environmental problems seem far away since we only use clean energy and clean production methods. The air is clean, the water is clean, and nobody would dare to touch the protected areas of nature because they constitute such value to our well-being. In the cities, we have plenty of green space and plants and trees all over. I still do not understand why in the past we filled all free spots in the city with concrete. Yeah, I fucking agree, but taking humans out of nature is going to be disastrous. When you are in a city, you are not in nature. What they're going to do is they are going to attempt to bring you to na bring nature to you instead of you to nature. And it doesn't work like that. Like, yeah, we need to clean up the air. Yeah, we need to clean up the water. Everybody should have access to clean drinking water from a stream within their community. 100%, right? But what are they advocating for? They're advocating for a centralized designated zone for where humanities can be. It's basically hinting at that humans are diseased and humans do not belong in nature. We are not good enough for that. Bitch, we are nature. Shut the fuck up. Let's continue. Shopping. I can't really remember what that is. For most of us, it has been turned into choosing things to use. Sometimes I find this fun and sometimes I just want the algorithm to do it for me. It knows my taste better than I do by now. Again, telling us technology is smarter than us, dumb human. We can do all this shit for you. You're too dumb for personal responsibility. So dumb that you can't even have your own tastes. It's sickening, man. That message is just sickening when you think about it. Like, do you, this, this is how these people view us and why these types of policies are being put in place. When AI and robots took over so much of our work, we suddenly had time to eat well, sleep well, and spend time with other people. The concept of rush hour makes no sense anymore since the work that we can do, since the work we do can be done at any time. I don't really know if I would call it work anymore. It's more like thinking time, creation time, and development time. And you know, what's interesting is I very much recognize this belief system within myself. 100%. I recognize it within myself. There is such a part of me that has been con conditioned into valuing time for being present, for being creative, for developing and growing in all of these principles that they're talking about. And we need to be careful because yes, th those are principles we should absolutely value. I have had to learn there needs to be time for personal responsibility, for where I'm taking care of myself, for where I rely on myself, whether it be to make food, to uh, get water. All of these essential survival skills, essentially, self-responsibility skills, I've had to reteach myself a lot, and there's a lot I'm still learning. You know, I've made a ton of mistakes in the past, whether it be just financially or uh, in terms of being out on my own, all the certain mistakes when I was younger, and I'm still young, I'm only 25, where all of it was just because I had no self-responsibility, none, because I valued these things too much. I was unable to take care of myself and I still value these things immensely. But I've had to learn some self-responsibility and value independence and doing shit on my own is what's ultimately fulfilling in combination with these. Because just those alone, it's half the puzzle. It's half the puzzle. Essentially, in the past, we've built a society that is, um, it is, it is built on self-responsibility, individuality. But what's happening is they're giving us the other half the piece of the puzzle, the other half of it. We were feeling unfulfilled before. If we were to add in creation time, thinking time, you know, all of this time for taking care of ourselves, 
and spending time with other people, like they're giving us half the puzzle, what we are desiring, but they're going to take away the other portion. And what's going to happen is we're going to be unfulfilled because we won't have any self-responsibility. When I was, you know, seeking and I didn't know what I was missing, I was missing the self-responsibility. So I've been in this type of mindset before thinking that this is the way and it's just not it's not you need self-responsibility you need self-responsibility let's keep going for a while everything was turned into entertainment and people did not want to bother themselves with difficult issues it was only at the last minute that we found out how to use all these new technologies for better purposes than just killing time my biggest concern is all the people who do not live in our city this is a big paragraph. Those we lost on the way. Those who decided that it became too much. All this technology. Those who felt obsolete and useless when robots and AI took over big parts of our jobs. Those who got upset with the political system and turned against it. They live different kind of lives outside of the city. Some have formed little self-supplying communities. Others just stayed in the empty and abandoned houses in small 19th century villages. Now, this is a really massive paragraph, and I want to tell you why. They are acknowledging that they can't stop people from living outside of this agenda. There will be self-sustaining communities that pop up. There are going to be people who are living outside the system, and how do they frame it? to try and prevent you from becoming one of them. It's almost like they're undesirable. Like, look at them, poor them. They're not joining in on our fun. And I can tell you, living in small town South Dakota right now, you know, I, am, I know that I'm not going back into those cities. I'm not going into this lifestyle that they are promoting. I will live off-grid if necessary, completely detached from all technologies, doing my own thing in small self-sustaining communities, which is the solution. So, and why this is important because is if enough people demand that we will create it on a global scale, all of the powers that be the institutions that are pushing this will cease to exist. They will cease to exist. So we need people coming together, self-sustaining communities, self-reliance. We need that more than ever. You know, I'm going to get a little more into the housing market in a bit, but I want to say if I had the funds, I would be buying property, land, building a house, building a well water, getting the a well, like, start really growing food on a larger scale. Um, we need to start making that a priority, especially if you have the, the means, start taking these steps. Start taking these steps. You know, I'm very much financially constrained in a, a few ways. So, but however, I know it is within my mission here to own land to be a part of these self-sustaining communities, to have cattle, horses, land, small town world. That was very much part of my mission. I know that's gonna happen. I already consider it done in a sense, because time is non-linear. But we, we need to start really looking into that as an option. How can you become part of a tribe that is self-reliant, self-sustaining? Because it may be inevitable that this system of you own nothing and you'll be happy is implemented in some degree. It's certainly looking like a real possibility depending on how many more people wake up, how many more people demand self-reliance. really all depends. But just harness that skill within yourself if you do not want to take part in this dystopian great reset 
Anyways, I think we're almost at the end. Yeah, only two more paragraphs left. Once in a while, I get annoyed about the fact that I have no real privacy. Nowhere I can go and not be registered. I know that. Somewhere, everything I do, think, and dream of is recorded. I just hope that nobody will use it against me. Thought police. No, seriously, this is, this is a big deal. They're going to know everything. There is nothing that you can hide. There is no individual self in this scenario. Last paragraph. All in all, it's a good life. Much better than the path we were on, where it became so clear that we could not continue with the same model of growth. We had all these terrible things happen. Lifestyle diseases. Wow, that certainly sounds... Um, Certainly sounds familiar. When was this written? 2016? Huh. Climate change, the refugee crisis, environmental degradation, completely congested cities, water pollution, air pollution, social unrest, and unemployment. We lost way too many people before we realized that we could do things differently. Now, Let's look at all of those terrible things that are happening one more time. Lifestyle diseases, huh? I think that happened a lot in the past year, certainly. Oh, COVID-19 is a product of our lifestyle. We need a great reset to build back better. Next, they're talking about climate change. Climate change lockdowns have been talked about in mainstream circles, adopting COVID protocols for the sake of climate change. Who'd have thunk it? Refugee crisis, manufactured crisis at the border by the governments because they go into certain areas and they take out the governments. And they instill re regime change. They create refugees. Boom, motherfuckers have no homes and they need to flee to somewhere that is stable. Do you think most of these people want to leave their homes? You know, I have so much sympathy for these refugees because they are the ones getting absolutely fucked over by these groups. And what they don't realize is that the people taking them in are the ones who created the problem in the first place and forced them to flee their homes. That is exactly what is happening all over the world with different refugee crises. Whether you want to look down south, southern border in the United States, or you want to look at Syrian refugee crisis, all manufactured by the governments because of the groups that we funded, the leaders that we've taken out. Environmental degradation. Completely congested cities already happening. Water pollution. What did I tell you earlier? We don't have clean drinking water. Air pollution. Certainly going to be happening. Social unrest. Huh, that really sounds familiar. Divide and conquer. Racial divide. Hmm. Hmm. And unemployment. Wow, I wonder if there was a recent event that caused unemployment. Wow. It's not like all time. Uh, unemployment uh, numbers are at an all-time high, are they? They can't be. They can't be. Anyways, we lost way too many people before we realized that we could do things differently. So right here, they are advocating. We need a great reset. If you don't believe, if you still don't believe this is part of the quote unquote great reset at the World Economic Forum, go read Klaus Schwab's book on the called the great reset go listen to his podcast go read the world economic forum documents the tracking and tracing systems the the jibby jabby passports which were talked about in 2019 by the united nations all of this stuff is right there it's not a conspiracy theory it is an agenda agenda 2030 again welcome to 2030 i own nothing have no privacy and life has never been better it's very simple as to what this is why is it that all the countries around the world use the slogan build back better? Why this is a global agenda? Why did all the countries have the same lockdown policies for COVID? All of the same policies for recovering from COVID from the pandemic. Why? Why was the Tanzanian president killed? That'll get this whole thing labeled as quote unquote misinformation if it's not already. But he was against the World Economic Forum agenda. And he mysteriously died after of a heart attack after going missing for two weeks. Huh, interesting. 
He's the one who took a COVID test. I almost said a swab, Klaus Schwab, um, a COVID test and tested a papaya. I think like a, a couple other things, fruits, a melon maybe. And they came back positive and he threw out all the COVID tests, refused, didn't allow the media to talk about it because he said it was a scam. So, and now the new president is a member of the World Economic Forum. Who would have ever thought? That's a rabbit hole you can go down for another day, but it's a global agenda. So I want to now get into the importance of getting your own private property, if you can, becoming self-reliant, and how this is playing out, because it is going to become more and more and more difficult as time goes on to get property. And there's a few articles coming out in the past year really displaying why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this article. Originally, it was published by Wall Street Journal, but for some reason, they locked me out their page because they require subscriptions. But I found it on foxbusiness.com. And it's called, if you sell a house these days, the buyer might be a pension fund. So I'm going to read a bit of this. Maybe the whole thing kind of depends on what I'm feeling. Yield chasing investors are snapping up single family homes, competing with ordinary Americans and driving up prices. A bidding war broke out this winter at a new subdivision north of Houston. But the prize this time was the entire subdivision not just a single suburban house, illustrating the rise of big investors as a potent new force in the U.S. housing market. D.C. Horton Incorporated built 124 houses in Conroe, Texas, rented them out, and then put the whole community, Amber Pines at Foster's Ridge, on the block. A who's who of investors and home rental firms flocked to the December sale. The winning $32 million bid came from an online property investing platform, Fundrise LLC, which manages more than $1 billion on behalf of about 150,000 individuals. The country's most prolific home builder booked roughly twice what it typically makes selling houses to the middle class and encouraging debut in the business of selling entire neighborhoods to investors. Now, This is why it is becoming so increasingly difficult for somebody, an individual, to buy a home. You know, I'm out in South Dakota right now, and a good example is a lot of people talk about the Black Hills. I'm sort of in the middle of the state, but a lot of people talk about how people are just swooping in, paying for houses, particularly in the Black Hills, but all throughout the states. They'll come in and they'll bid $50,000, $100,000 over the asking price, right? And a lot of times, it's not individuals doing it. So in, I just hear about that personally in South Dakota, and now I'm starting to see these articles in the news as part of this sort of great reset that we're talking about. I'm seeing it playing out in my community. Let's keep reading. We certainly wouldn't expect every single family community we sell to sell at a 50% gross margin, the builder's finance chief Bill Wheat said at a recent investor conference. From individuals with smartphones and a few thousand dollar pensions and private equity firms with billions, yield chasing investors are snapping up single family houses to rent out or flip. They are competing for houses with ordinary Americans who are armed with the cheapest mortgage financing ever and driving up home prices. It's very difficult right now for homeowners to get loans. Even if they have great credit, they have a firm backing. Now, why is that? I'll let you answer that. Let's keep going. You now have permanent capital competing with a young couple trying to buy a house, said John Burns, whose eponymous real estate consulting firm estimates that in many of the nation's top markets, roughly one in every five houses sold is bought by someone who never moves in. That's going to make U.S. housing permanently more expensive. And what have we seen in the last year, especially with this manufactured uh, response, create a crisis, create, control the response, complete transfer of wealth, people losing their jobs, people not having the money to go in and buy, yet these firms are armed with billions. The consulting firm found Houston to be a favorite haunt of investors who have lately accounted for 24% of home purchases there. 
Investors slice of the housing market grows as it does in other boom towns such as Miami, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. Among properties priced below 300,000 and in decent school districts. So they are specifically targeting lower class, middle class families in decent school districts. They don't want you owning a home. That in itself is alarming. Limiting housing supply, low rates, a global reach for yield, and what we're calling the institutionalization of real estate investors has set the stage for another speculative investor-driven home price bubble, the firm concluded. The bubble has room to grow before it bursts, according to the John Burns Real Estate Consulting, but it is inflating fast. The firm expects home prices to climb 12% this year on top of last year's 11% rise and increase at least 6% in 2022, a period of appreciation reminiscent of 2004 and 2005. That's another thing a lot of people aren't talking about when it comes to you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. What is money worth nowadays? I tried to view it in the sense that the price of things are not going up. The value of money is going down. So not only are the house prices going to rise, but you, people are just not going to have the money because of all of the economic devastation to even come close to purchasing a house. They're doing this deliberately. It's part of the World Economic Forum's plan. That boom was different, fueled by loose lending that enabled individuals to speculate on home prices by racking up mortgages they could repay only if home prices kept climbing. The money party ended a few years later when home prices stopped rising. The ensuing crash wiped out $11 trillion in U.S. household wealth and brought the global financial system to the brink of collapse. Financiers stepped in starting in 2011 and gobbled up foreclosed homes at steep discounts. They dispatched buyers to courthouse auctions with duffel bags of cash. Smartphones and tablet computers knew then enabled them to orchestrate the land grab and manage tens of thousands of far-flung properties thereafter. They dominated the market for a few years, accounting for about a third of sales in some markets and setting a floor for falling prices. There wasn't much competition. Stung by losses, banks made it harder for regular home buyers to get a mortgage. Millions of Americans were underwater, owing more on their mortgages than their homes were worth and unable to move. That sounds awfully familiar. That doesn't it? Home rental firms, including Innovation Homes Inc. in America Homes for Rent, thrived. Renting suburban homes proved so profitable, profitable that landlords hit the open market and added properties at full price once foreclosures dried up. Many now build houses explicitly to rent. I can confirm. I can confirm. Ever since I was 15 years old, I've been living in rented properties. Even now, I'm in a rental. I, I, don't, I don't own shit. So it's, it's growing. You ask half the people you know, depending on where you are, of course, if you're in a city, there's going to be way more people renting, but you'd be surprised how many, how many people in small town America rent even out here. The coronavirus pandemic sparked a race for home office space and yards. Occupancy rates reach records and rents are rising with home prices. It just made me lose my spot. There we go. The ecosystem of companies that service finance and mimic the mega landlords is booming. Burns counted more than 200 companies and investment firms in the moose in the house hunt moose hunt computer assisted flipper open door technologies inc money managers including jp morgan assess management and blackrock inc we are going to get into blackrock inc because they are trending pretty heavily right now there's a lot of people noticing what they're doing buying up all these properties and that was actually partially what inspired me to do this episode, seeing the articles coming out about BlackRock, seeing what they're doing. And I'm going to get into that just to show you who their backing is kind of from in a minute. We're going to get into that. But um, which now reporters wholesale, wholesale home sales to bulk buyers and its quarterly results. Spring brought a fresh stampede of buyers. PCCP LLC, which typically invests in apartment buildings and office towers, said it bought rental home communities in the Southeast, the start of 1 billion pack with Calsters, California Home 
286.9 billion teachers retirement system. What is the teacher's retirement system doing in all this? Um, yeah, that kind of sums up the article. We don't, it, it just gives a few more examples. So you can see these investment companies swooping in and it's only going to pick up, only going to pick up over the next couple of years. So that's why it's so important. If you have the means, do attempt to own some property right now. Do move to those smaller communities. Start meeting up with people, building self-reliant communities. It's really going to be essential right now. And BlackRock, who I would like to spend a minute on here, they are backed by the one and only Federal Reserve, the good old Fed. Now, I do believe we are very close to an impending financial collapse. I guess I maybe legally have to say this is not financial advice. I don't know what the fuck you should do with your money. It's your money. But this is, I'm going to give my take on the financial crisis we are facing. Inflation, value of the dollar, it's not backed by the gold standard. It is going to completely collapse at some point. We all kind of know this. So what are the options? I mean, I personally don't have much of a solution to give you. I mean, you can invest in cryptos or Bitcoin, things like that. But, and again, this is not financial advice. You know, we're seeing talk about a, of a federal reserve global currency, a gov coin, something along those lines. So we have to be very mindful resources are much more valuable than actual money right now. Resources. And I would recommend investing in resources to become self-reliant as the number one investment you could make. So where we're heading, your money may not mean shit at all. So invest in resources and help others within your community invest in resources if you have the means. So I'm just going to read this a little bit on BlackRock. BlackRock, an investment manager of $7 trillion in stock and bond funds, revealed plans by the Federal Reserve for a bailout of financial institutions and corporations in August 2019 months before COVID-19 appeared and long before the public was aware of any financial crisis. Wow. That's very interesting, BlackRock. What was sort of your rationale at the time, huh? Could you answer that? Let's get BlackRock CEO spokesperson on the Fifth Dimension podcast to answer for that. Please and thank you. So they give me their contact information. Um, but no, seriously, how can you justify that? It is ob it's so obvious. The All of the documents are right here that this was a planned crash, a planned response. You can argue about the nature of the disease all you want. It's a planned response. All of it. Why were JB Jab passports again being talked about in 2019? Planned response. Let's keep reading this a little bit. BlackRock's blueprint implements going direct. That's the name of the policy. With bailouts to the commercial paper market, money market funds, corporate bonds, and a host of other markets. The Fed plans to leverage $454 billion from the COVID-19 stimulus program and the CARES Act into a $4.54 trillion bailout plan. Congress approved the deal without any meaningful debate. This means Congress and the Federal Reserve have forced taxpayers to absorb these losses on assets by the Wall Street banks it supervises. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute here. It is so obvious all of this has been an orchestrated event. You will own nothing. You will be happy. Shit, they said that in 2016. And what do you know? The circumstances where that is the so quote-unquote solution, it, it just so happens to arise. My golly, I always remember, my friends, there is no such thing as coincidences. Everything is connected when you dig deep enough. Everything. 
I mean, we are all interconnected as one species, one being, a super organism, you could say. You know, I'd like to make the analogy. It's like how trees in an ecosystem, in a forest, in the forest, all of the tree's roots are interconnected. You know, we don't see that. The same is said for humanity. We are interconnected as one being, right? And that in itself means there are no coincidences. There's no chance. We are all connected energetically. Things manifest energetically for the reason that they do. There is no, co there's no coincidences. If you think there are coincidences, it's just because you're naive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There are no coincidences. So, and you can clearly see the different details, how these things line up. And, you know, I, I want to focus now on what is it like an actual solution to this kind of agenda. And we've kind of already talked about it a little bit, but essentially this program is calling for you to live in a space of lack. It's painting what is ultimately a dystopian picture, but selling it to you as butterflies, rainbows, no personal responsibility is a good thing. You need to get your own abundance in order. You know, we are meant to be living in this world. One fulfilled spiritually uh, have a deeper purpose and meaning. We are also meant to be living in abundance. How many resources are there in the world? What is stopping you from claiming your own abundance? Going out and making shit happen. Going out and getting resources that you need to survive. To you to take care of you. What is preventing you from getting your own abundance in order? Is what I want to ask you. Make that your number one priority right now. Because ultimately there's nothing in the collective that you can't heal within yourself. And how we stop this at a collective level is by just that by us taking personal responsibility as a collective. Stop identifying with these divide and conquer label groups that they have created. Stop identifying solely by your political party. See us all as one being interconnected, uh, whether you're in the cities, rural America. We need to get our shit in order and come together to stop this shit. It's as simple as that. Wherever the collective goes, we generally go, we can create our own path. Like I said, there's going to be those self, small, small, self-sufficient, reliant communities. But how big is that going to be? How big is that going to be? Where is humanity going to go? You know, I, I love humanity too much to not sit here and talk about this shit. You know, you really have to sacrifice your ego if you want to make a difference. Like, it would be so easy for somebody like me, for example. Like, I used to, when I grew up, I just want validation, acceptance. I I get why people just go with the flow or they don't say anything. They're like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out down the line. You're too afraid. You don't want people to shit on you, criticize you. Fuck them. The people, there are going to be people who don't wake up. There are going to be people who don't see what's going on until it's too late. The question is, how many check with yourself ultimately i think a lot of people know that something's not right and if you're one of those people who is listening to this and you're sacrificing your voice for your own ego for your own character why what are you afraid to lose i mean clearly they're just gonna fucking take everything anyways so as the divine creators of our reality if we live in fear of speaking our truth we are going to bring that into our own lives. Exactly what we fear. So it's time to take some personal responsibility, take charge, speak your truth from a place of love, from presence, get your own house in order. You know, we need to have some confidence in our own voice, in the direction we're going. We ultimately these groups, World Economic Forum, they want us in fear. They want us afraid. Does it matter what fear programming we're subscribed to? Whether it's of a, we're afraid of a deadly virus or we're afraid of a new world order. 
No, we're in fear either way. You can't live in fear. You just have to flow with it. You have to accept the world is as it is because it is. So what am I going to do about it here and now? I only have this moment. What am I, what can I do? How can I serve a calling beyond the individual self right now? That's what you got to do. And, you know, putting your house in order, that creates a happy, a healthy home. Whether you're on your own with family, with community, put your shit together so other people around you can put their shit together. Lead by example. If, you're, if you have a whole family, let's say you're, you're a mom, you got kids to think about. This is their future. You know, I think about my students who I've had in the past all the time. Like, shit. Was I able to teach them and to ask questions? And I'm still in contact with some of them. And some of them are asking the right questions. And I'm very proud of them. But, like, we need to demonstrate how to be ourselves authentically, how to speak the truth, how to call out injustice without fear. You know, sometimes it's the ones who run out first in a war are the ones who get shot down. But they led the charge. And they had a lot of people behind them. So sacrifice your ego. Stop holding yourself back because you want to be accepted in a society that's clearly dystopian anyways. Create your fucking reality right now. Seriously. And when, and to do this, you almost need to take a step back. Go inward. How are you truly feeling? What is your authentic message? How can you communicate from a place of love? What judgments are you holding? Are you projecting your own fears on other people? Ask those questions. Go inward. Find solitude because it's from solitude that we light our own inner fire. How we keep going. You know, I have to get up. When I get up every day, I have to meditate. If I don't meditate, if I don't do breath work, I self-sabotage. I don't want to be creative. I judge. I'm only human. That's why I got to put my own house in order every day. Do the work. Trust yourself to do the work. Because if you can't trust yourself to do the work, it's not going to get done for you. And you're playing into exactly what's going on. Self-responsibility. So, and I also just want to, I would say, you know, a, a lot of us are contemplating right now, like, are we doing enough? Can't this be stopped? Why are the rewards not here? Why have we not solved this? I would say patience. Patience, patience, patience. It's possible many of the rewards are already here or coming. How many people are awake right now? I, I've never felt the immense amount of, one, self-respect, self-love, but two, community and tribe. I've never felt such a strong connection to people. So I think we are building the solutions and maybe we just don't see the full picture yet. But I truly believe that's what a lot of us are here to do. And when we're doing it, I have no doubt about that in my mind. And that's what keeps me going every day. You know, over time, a thousand baby steps, it creates that mile. We just got to keep going. We got to keep going. We got to keep doing what we're doing. We got to keep spreading the message from a place of positivity and love and a reminder of who the fuck we are and what we are capable of united. So let's fucking go. Let's do this. You know, if you want to own nothing, own nothing, but do it on your own fucking terms. We can create the world that we are meant to be living in. We should be living in a golden age where there's abundance, prosperity available for everybody for the unique gift that they are. We can create that. I firmly believe it. Built on the pillars of one, interconnectivity, but two, divine recognition of each individual expression each person. 
We are separate but one simultaneously. Separate in our expression, one in our humanity. And just remember that it will be all right. You are infinite and eternal even beyond this lifetime. So how it goes, it goes. So if you're a fan of the show, be sure to subscribe, whatever platform you're on. Um, I'm going to have a, some interviews out later this week. So I just been feeling more called to do some solo casts on these subjects because I've noticed, especially from doing the last one, the project blue beam one, not only it got good positive feedback. I appreciate all the feedback I got. Um, but this is like me sort of actively thinking and articulating. Um, and I'm learning as I'm saying this, like, I wouldn't have necessarily, I didn't, I didn't know I would have been able to string that out as the way I did just sort of based off what I already know. Like I had to verbalize it all to really comprehend it all and interconnect the dots, if you will, even for myself, it really helps bring it together. So uh, when the times arise, I will continue to do podcasts such as this. When the topics arise, I'll just go with the heart and let it come on out. So um, but be sure to follow me on Instagram at Evan McDermott, also at the fifth dimension podcast. And you can go to my telegram channel, which is in the episode description and, you know, just come say what's up, come connect. I do masculinity coaching, life coaching, break the matrix programming, um, all that stuff. Episode description, you can find it there, but I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of this episode, whether it's in the YouTube comments or just shoot me a message or put it on an Instagram story. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys all tuning in and I shall see you all next time. So long.